founded in 2019, Mosia Tunia Cigars embraces the myth and the legend of the mighty Victoria Falls, one of the seven wonders of the world found in Zimbabwe. A casual conversation across oceans between Shep Mafundikwa, then recently retired, and Loy Vio about Zimbabwe's quality tobacco and the iconic falls stirred something in both of them. Right at that moment, a seed to set up the first hand-rolled cigar company in Zimbabwe was planted. We recently had a brief discussion with Shep Mafundikwa and we touched on why he decided to start the business, what they learned over the last two years, and so much more. Hi, I'm Shep Mafundikwa, CEO of Mosia Tunya Cigars, Zimbabwe best uh, cigar manufacturing company. And today we are at uh, the Tobacco Research uh, Farm in Banket, inspecting this beautiful uh, tobacco crop. And in a year's time, when you're smoking the mossy, this is the tobacco. This is where it's from. Um, hi again, Shepard. So we've been uh, communicating over the past few days and uh, I'm super grateful that you've agreed to do this. Uh, thanks for your time, but um, I guess let's get straight into it. Um, let's start with, uh, with the name. I think you guys have such an iconic name and I've always wondered, um, why did you settle for the name Mosia Tunya as the name of your cigar business? Hi Farai, thanks for uh, giving us the opportunity to share our story. Um, you've asked a very interesting question regarding the name Mosia Tunya. Uh, when we decided to start this project, we wanted uh, a name that would be, uh, that would identify with uh, Zimbabwe and uh, the Victoria Falls being what it is, world famous, one of the seven wonders of the world. Uh, we decided we're going to go with uh, the local name, which is Mosia Tunya, the smoke that thunders. I mean, that was a no-brainer. Uh, once uh, the light bulb flashed, we quickly went ahead and um, grabbed that name. Yeah, looking at it in hindsight, it definitely sounds like there's a good connection there. The smoke that thunders and you guys being a cigar brand, it definitely seems like there's a, a good connection there and it's a very catchy name but yeah beyond uh, beyond the name itself um why did you maybe two questions there that i'll split um how did you guys come to actually decide to pursue this business and why uh cigars uh, i just thought that would be a very interesting thing zimbabwe is uh known uh, globally for its uh, high quality tobacco and uh, there was a gap in the market. Uh, no one was making cigars in the country. And uh, we thought that uh, presented an opportunity for us to you know, do something different. And we also wanted to play our part in um, value addition. Uh, most of the tobacco that's produced in this country, good as it is, uh, goes out of the country in its raw uh, form. And we saw an opportunity, we saw a gap uh, and uh, decided to go that way. Yeah, I definitely think you mentioned something that's pretty uh, powerful there in terms of, of value addition and coming into a, a niche space. Maybe let's talk about the value addition bit uh, first. Uh, could you briefly explain how important value addition is, uh, especially in your context? Value addition is uh, important in our perspective because uh, we are exporting a product which is fetching um, more uh, as opposed to exporting a primary product. And we are also uh, creating employment. Uh, we are cre creating and helping with uh, the development of uh, the export market, which brings in the much needed foreign currency into the country. So it is uh, very, very important that um, companies focus on uh, value. 
companies focus on value addition uh, rather than just exporting uh, primary uh, commodities. Yeah, I get that. I, I hear you. Um, you mentioned something there about uh, employment. Uh, maybe let's talk about uh, the structure of your business. Uh, I've noticed going through your social media posts that one of the things uh, you guys have put front and center and championed is the fact that um, women play a big part in your story. Could you please just explain the role uh, that women are playing in your business and why you thought that it is important to actually have them there? Uh, thanks, Farai. Uh, one of the things that we really are proud of at uh, Mosia Tunya is uh, our Women Empowerment uh, Project. We made a deliberate uh, uh, decision to employ uh, women in our factory. All the cigars that are being rolled here are rolled by um, a female um, staff complement. And um, we, 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 we feel strongly that uh, we need to uh, play our part in empowering uh, the women in this country. And uh, right now, we have managed to uh, transfer skills from the uh, Caribbean to uh, our local women who are making uh, fantastic cigars, cigars that have uh, you know, received uh, acclaim uh, far and wide. So this is something that we are very proud of. Women have uh, been historically uh, marginalized and they bear the brunt of uh, raising families so really uh, for us uh, we feel that um, the little that we can do to empower them so that they are able to provide for their families and take care of themselves uh, is something that's uh, really worth doing yeah that's that's great to hear uh, shepherd um, you mentioned something interesting there you talked about uh, transference of skills from from the dominican to zimbabwe and and in line with that i read that uh, when you were setting up the company, you brought in first a Cuban couple and then a Dominican expert, I think Elias Lopez is the name if I'm not mistaken, to help you set up. Uh, I found this extremely uh, intriguing. I found it very intriguing. And I was wondering, what did these people contribute to Mosia Tunya that might not have been the same now if their insight had not been shared when you were starting the company? Well, the expertise that we brought in uh, is part of the uh, successful skills transfer that uh, we did. I mean, if you were to visit our factory today, it's an exact replica of uh, a cigar factory um, anywhere in the Caribbean or in uh, you know uh, Latin America. So that was uh, very, very critical. I mean, we had to do things right from the start. And of course, I mean, we knew nothing about cigars here. And uh, the role that uh, the Dominican maestro Elias played is uh, very critical. Uh, today, uh, we have these uh, proud uh, women working at uh, Mosia Tunya, rolling cigars as if they've been doing that for the rest of their lives. And this is a skill that they never dreamt that they would uh, possess one day. So yes, uh, the skills transfer uh, was very, very successful. Uh, talking about those uh, skills that were transferred, one of those is, I know for a fact, is hand rolling the cigars. So I know that in the uh, cigar community, there's a, <laughs> and you have to explain this to me a bit, there is a, a culture, for lack of a better term, where hand rolled cigars are held in higher esteem compared to machine rolled cigars and Mosia Tunya is the first hand rolled cigar business in, in Zimbabwe if I'm not mistaken. Um, I assume you are a person who is uh, passionate about the cigar culture and you would know um, the difference between a hand rolled and a machine rolled and why it's uh, held in such high esteem if we're talking about hand rolled cigars. Cigar rolling uh, Farai is an art and um, cigar aficionados uh, will prefer a hand-rolled cigar to a machine-made cigar. The advantage is being that uh, what goes into the cigar is actually being determined uh, by a human who's using their hands to 
put in the right um, filler, use the right binder, and uh, generally uh, the wrapper is more attractive on a handmade uh, cigar than on a machine-made cigar, which is like, um, you know, uh, done like those are created in bulk and they're created by a machine. So people do prefer uh, a hand-rolled cigar to machine-made cigars. Yeah, thanks for <laughs> that brief uh, crash course. I, I can't wait to explain this myself to other people so that I can appear as if I know what I am talking about. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for thanks for that. But um, on a on a more uh, personal note, uh, before you came back to to start a business uh you were in the states if i'm not mistaken for for 15 years um and uh judging from your linkedin you spent some time at, at delta airlines uh, are there any lessons you learned during your time at delta and in the states in general that are now reflected uh in the business yeah you're always welcome for i mean we can uh, do a cigar 101 for you but uh, let me just put something into perspective. Before I left uh, the country to uh, go and settle in the US, I was already uh, running a business here. I was working for one of uh, the big corporates here where I uh, ran my own division as a, a general manager. So pretty much I would say that uh, my experience here was more valuable to the experience that I uh, got uh, working uh, with uh, Delta Airlines. But at the same time, uh, I think uh, there was so much uh, to learn uh, in, uh, in, in corporate America. Uh, and um, I did uh, glean um, a few valuable lessons which I brought back, which I'm now applying in running um, uh, this business that I'm running now. And, um, you know, customer service is huge uh, in the U.S. And uh, this is something that we are also trying to apply here at Mosia Tunya Cigars. Uh, we value uh, the feedback uh, that we get from our customers. And um, it's just a different way of doing things. I mean, the work ethic, um, you know, respect for... Um, the people who make it happen, who are the uh, employees. These are all things that we are trying to put in uh, to become a global brand. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. Um, I think that exposure is, is, is pretty important, being able to, to go out and, and see the way things are done and, and take what's good and bring it back. I think it can only, uh, it can only be a, a good thing. Uh, beyond that, um, you guys have obviously been operational for, you guys have been operational for over a year now. Um, what are the biggest challenges you faced as a business? All right, the biggest challenges have uh, been the pandemic. I mean, trying to start a business uh, during a global pandemic uh, is not something that I would wish on anyone. But um, we have taken uh, the time to learn and we've taken the time to train our staff to sort of like get to grips uh, with this new business. And uh, it's, it's, it's really been a learning curve. I mean, uh, there was no template for us to follow. Um, we had to find out on our own and um, they, 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 they have been challenges, I mean, but uh, I, I would say that um, mostly uh, we've been struggling with, uh, you know, the effects, the negative effects of the pandemic. Yeah, that's that's definitely understandable and, and unfortunate. Um, it's, it's something that has uh, kind of caught the entire world um, unaware uh, and, and has had uh, devastating impact but you know i'm glad that you guys have been able to to soldier on and and i do hope that this is a bridge that um the world crosses uh soon 
um beyond that though um um what do you think zimbabwe's government can do uh to better help entrepreneurs like yourself who uh put everything on the line to to come back and start businesses or generally people who start businesses because yeah i think the the stakes are pretty high and <laughs> what what can the government do to enable those people uh, there are many challenges faced by uh, startups. Um, you know, when you're starting up a business, you're obviously not doing this from a position of strength, whereby you've got, um, you know, an endless um, uh, access to, to, to finance. So I think that there are things that government can do to encourage, um, you know, uh, companies to, 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 to start up. And this could be in the form of uh, bridging finance, in the form of grants to fund operations, especially for those companies who are, you know, working towards uh, exports. And we also could benefit uh, from a 100% Forex retention for, uh, say, a period of five years. And uh, taxes that are paid, like in our uh, industry, uh, a reduction of the excess duty uh, would um, really help for a certain period of time like a tax holiday and um, just uh, making general information available uh, to uh, the resources that can be made available to young startups would be very beneficial yeah thanks for that shepherd uh, that's pretty enlightening uh, and i and i definitely understand where you are where you're coming from um on a on a bit of a lighter note, so one of the things I noticed whilst researching for this episode is that uh, the the components or everything that goes into cigars for you guys is sourced locally, except uh, for the wrapper, and I found that a bit interesting. How complex is it for Zimbabwe to produce its own wrappers? Could you please take me through that? I thought that would be one of those fun fact kind of questions. Uh, Farai, um, 95 percent of our uh, cigars, uh, the input is local. Uh, we use local tobacco, but we have to import uh, the wrapper. The wrapper really has to be a perfect leaf, uh, flawless. I mean, uh, for lack of a better word, that's the makeup on the product. So when you see that cigar there, or you're holding it in your hand, it should be like perfect perfect leaf no blemishes uh, but i'm happy to say that uh, we have started experiments with uh, the tobacco research board locally to actually produce the leaf uh, here there are certain conditions that need to be met in order to come up with a perfect leaf um, my thinking is that within the next uh, two years or so uh, zimbabwe should be able to have a hundred percent cigar uh, made with uh, local rappers yeah all the best on that on that research you are conducting um 100 locally made will be better than 95 percent, of course so <laughs> i i hope you guys can can achieve that goal you've set yourself and then lastly before we wrap this up um is there any advice you would give to someone who is starting a business in Zimbabwe right now? All I can say is just follow your dreams. Don't give up. Uh, hang in there. Uh, go for something unique. Keep uh, hammering on those doors until uh, they open. Thanks again, Shepard, for uh, taking the time out of your schedule to do this. Uh, it means a lot for us. Uh, hopefully the people who watch this uh, take away something. And I hope next time we can do this in person and you can um, teach me how to cut, light and smoke cigars like a professional. <laughs> but yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot for agreeing to be on our channel. Thanks, Farai. We can't wait for that opportunity to um, go through the cigar etiquette with you. And uh, we just want to say one last thing to the world. Uh, the smoke that thunders is here and it's coming soon to an outlet near you.